Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today I'm going to be answering the question and outlining my arguments on how Tottenham finish in the top for this season. But before we get into this video, if you are new to Sunny Talk Spurs, why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I've gone live. Now, let's get into the video. So yeah, Tottenham finishing in the top four. After the first 10 games, people would have said, yeah, that looks quite likely. You know, we were showing we were undefeated in the Premier League. We were top of the table. But in the last two fixtures against Chelsea and Wolves, people were suggesting that the wheels have come off. You know, we are currently in a bit of an injury crisis. We've lost James Madison. We've lost Mickey van der Ven. Christian Romero was suspended. Destiny Adogi obviously saw red, but he comes back against Aston Villa at the weekend, which is a promising sign. But... I think, you know, with the Champions League spaces and the current state of the Premier League, Tottenham still have hope. There is there is a lot of hope that Tottenham can still finish in the top four under Ange Postacoglu. And that's why I picked five key points to why and how Tottenham will finish in those spaces. We all know as well that fifth in the Premier League could, I say could, give us a Champions League place this year. So hopefully... That's the case. And, you know, the, the video will still be relevant if we finish in fifth. So my first point of how we get top four, and these are in no particular order, I've gone with January signings. And if you are obviously a fade to the channel, you will know that I've done a number of videos recently about signings in and out of the club. So I'll put links throughout the video. You can go and check them out. I've done them on Antonio Nusa. I've done them on Santiago Jimenez. And I feel like these are going to be the difference between Tottenham really getting into the top four this season. Daniel Levy will have to back Ange Postacoglu in the market come January if we hope of finishing anywhere near the top four. We've obviously seen, I've mentioned it already in the video, injury crisis to lots of players. You know, our squad is threadbare. The starting 11 when fit, and they were for the first 10 games, was fantastic. All ticking and clicking and playing this style of football. But with the injuries... And obviously my next point relates to this, but I won't go into it too much. Some other players, you know, are not good enough for Ange Postacoglu's style of football. So the thought process is we need to sign a winger come striker type. Nusa and Jimenez come to mind. We also need more cover at centre-back. We've seen, you know, the dilemma of do we play Dyer and Davis or do we play Phillips and Dorrington? That seems to be a common debate for Tottenham Hotspur fans at the moment. So it has to, you know come to a head. Levy's got a back post to We've got, you know, Scott Munn is at the club. We've got Johan Lang and Scouts now in place with this stat-based signing um, profile that we are now moving towards or in at the moment, actually. So, yeah, number one, we have got to get some reinforcements into the club to help the squad and move us up in the table where we belong. I say up in the table where we belong. We are currently sitting fourth, which is still good. I would have snapped your hand off at that, but... To remain in that space, number two is a very key point. We need to remove the deadwood from the team and the club and promote youth. Obviously, we still are playing the likes of Eric Dyer, and I just don't know if they're good enough um, for the, for this team anymore. I think, you know, in reflection, Ben Davis was okay against Wolves, but is he good enough for Ange Ball? Hard to say. A lot of people controversial. I keep saying about Pierre Milhoybier. Looks like he might be off as well. So is there a point of keeping these players around where we've got hungry players in the youth academy? You've got Hugo Lloris still there. I guess maybe this is a long-term process as well. A lot of these players could end, could end up leaving in the summer. So that's potential. But as I say, our youth academy at the moment is thriving. There are lots of good players in there. And if we can craft them into players that would be perfect for the system then why not give it a go? I feel like more people would be happy to see an Ashley Phillips or a Dorrington than a Dyer and a Davis, who we've seen what they can do in games. But maybe they have to be bled in eventually. Maybe not fully chuck them in at the deep end. You know, we've got Donnelly at the club, you know. Just really good squad of young players who can potentially play Angeball. We've seen their credentials in the youth academy and set up at the moment. Why not give them a go? It's definitely worth it, I believe. So yeah, number two, get rid of some of that deadwood in January or hopefully as the season goes on and promote more youth to the team already. Number three, now, I've seen a lot of different things now from the last two games about Ange 
and his tactics. So my point is for this one, we need to keep backing Ange's philosophy. In the first 10 games, we saw that it works. We know it's a bit of risk and reward football, but as I've said on previous videos, the risk is worth the reward. Two games, you know, where we've gone, you know, they're sometimes a bit of an anomaly. You know, we've had a game against Chelsea where we've gone down to nine men and we're still playing that fashion of the high line and it still worked to a certain point. And even against Wolves, there was different players in those positions. So they're still learning as well how to play that style of football if we don't get rid of them soon, hopefully. But I believe that we've got to keep back in Ange. I've seen a few Tottenham fans worried about should he, you know, should he twist, should he change his style, should we sit back a bit more? But no, I think we've got to keep playing this way because we've shown there is proof in the pudding already against teams like Arsenal, teams like Liverpool, um, Manchester United. And, you know, the next four games are going to be interesting. Um, but then that goes on to my next point, actually. So I still think we've got a backhand. I've seen people like Glenn Hoddle, Jamie O'Hara, uh, lots of people related to the football club who are nervous, who are worried about the style of football, especially at this time of play with all the situations going on. But I think you've got to be positive. You know, these players know what a fun attacking football's like. They've had enough of the likes of Conte, uh, Mourinho ball that really ruined Tottenham Hotspur for a while. So I think we've still got to back Ange Postacoglu all the way, but I know the majority of the fan base do back Postacoglu and love what they're seeing. And because the fan base back Ange Postacoglu, it goes on to my fourth point, and that is the importance of the home form. We saw after the Chelsea game, even though we lost 4-1, the atmosphere and the toxicity have a different now at the football club. Everyone's more positive. They love the manager. They love the situation. They love the players. So we will have to see in the next four games, which people are outlining as four key fixtures, three of them are home games. Obviously, Bar City, we've got Villa at home. We've got West Ham at home and Newcastle at home. We've got to make the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium a fortress. We've got to make it an intimidation. And our fan base is amazing at doing that. I've seen so many neutral fans and rival fans say how good the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is at creating an atmosphere and just really getting people on board and supporting this football club. So, and I really think, you know, any successful team, any team that aspires to achieve anything in a season has to have good home form. And lastly, and this is a weird extra point, I think. I've done five, but I was thinking of what really is important for top four and a season. And I believe it's momentum. And where could you get good momentum from? a very good FA Cup run. Now, obviously, people will say, well, we've got to win it. And we should be trying to win it this year. But by doing that, it will help our league form. You know, we're not playing much football this season. Apart from, obviously, December's going to be a bit of an interesting situation uh, with, you know, the amount of fixtures and can this team actually play that many fixtures after having, like, one game a week so far. But... I think an FA Cup run will really do the team some good. And if we can go on to win it, even get to the semi or final, I think that would give the boost that this squad needs even more to achieve. An extra point I was going to go into is we're going to be losing some players as the season goes on. Obviously, Sun's got the Asia Cup. Saar and Basuma are going to AFCON as well. So there's going to be some moments where players and rotation are going to be key. And by having a good FA Cup run, bleeding in some players as well, I think that will do the club and the squad the world of good. So there we have it. Those are my five reasons and factors on how Tottenham can get top four this season. Let me know in the comments down below, what would be your reasoning and examples on how we get top four? Is top four even achievable? Is it out of our hands so far? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you are new to the channel, as I said at the beginning of the video, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs and hit that notification bell because it lets you know when I've gone live. And as I said, I've been Sunny and I'll see you pretty soon and a ciao.